This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training in Book 3. In Chapter 2, this is Section 4. Beyond the Subject-Object Split, Part 2. To understand how miracles are used, you can think of the idea of atonement as a string of beads. The first bead and the last bead are the same, the atonement. Miracles are all the beads in between, helping to collapse the string in the mind that still believes in linear time. Until the first and last beads come together, to be seen as one and the same. The reason the Course is a Course in Miracles, training the mind toward miracle-mindedness, is because the mind believes in linear time. Miracles are like a metaphor, representing all those beads in between the first and last miracle. It is the same with holy encounters. Whenever you meet anybody, remember, it is a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Text Chapter 8, Section 3 There is only one miracle. That is the atonement. There is only one holy encounter. There is only one holy instant. It is about transcending the metaphors and coming to the state of mind that sees all the stepping stones for what they are. Just stepping stones. There is only one holy relationship. It is not always described that way in A Course in Miracles because there are rungs along the way. There are many statements such as two minds with one intent become so strong that what they will becomes the will of God. Workbook Lesson 185, Para 3 But when we shift into the context of one mind, one solution, We are in the one instant that can be received now, the atonement. Everything has to collapse into that instant. That is what immediate salvation is about. Cause and effect are one. Ideas leave not their source. Time is simultaneous. There are many ways of saying the same thing. I would like to go back to that sentence. Like to a dream of punishment, in which the dreamer is unconscious of what brought on the attack against himself, he sees himself attacked unjustly and by something not himself. He is the victim of this something else, a thing outside himself, for which he has no reason to be held responsible. He must be innocent because he knows not what he does, but what is done to him. Yet, in his own attack upon himself, yet is his own attack upon himself apparent still, for it is he who bears the suffering. And he cannot escape because its source is seen outside himself. Text, Chapter 27, Section 7 One major version of this is the feeling of powerlessness or blame, the belief that the world is the cause of one's suffering. Another version is the belief that the ego's thought system is so powerful that it is dictating one's decisions and actions. But the ego is not an entity that is outside the mind. The Course says, you made this thing up 
and seem to be ruled by it. It seems to be the dictator of what you think and say and do. That needs to be questioned as well. Where is the escape in thinking that the devil made you do it? Where is the peace in that? The Course says, Do not project this fear to time, for time is not the enemy that you perceive. Text Chapter 26, Section 8 Do not project the ego onto anything or anybody else, and do not project it to time. Do not even think that you are in chains from which you will be released at some point in the future. That would be thought of as a helpful stepping stone to think that at least there will be some future release. But even that has to be questioned. That is still projecting responsibility for the ego onto time, onto the future like the thought that time heals all wounds or in time I will reach enlightenment. Friend, you are saying that it is that is actually a denial of the decision for the atonement? David, yes, everything is always a present decision. The ego is a present decision. If you project to the future, that is like trying to hide it away in linear time. Linear time is a construction of the ego that is being held on to now. And it has to be let go of now. It is a metaphor to say that the decision for the ego is now in the sense that the deceived mind does not know what now is. Friend, the decision for the ego is past, not now. David, it is the belief that it is still present. It is the belief that the past is still present, which is another way of saying the mind does not know what the present is. That is where not knowing comes in. I do not know but I am open to be shown, to be shown the present. I am willing to desire the holy instant above all else. That is the focus and the intention of what we do. You can see there are a lot of metaphors in there. When we say that peace and upset are both present decisions, we are still operating from the same metaphor that there is a right mind and a wrong mind and that the mind can vacillate and choose one or the other every instant. You have to come to the point where you see that it is just a metaphor. You cannot hang out there. You have to come to understand that even the idea of a right mind and wrong mind is a metaphor or construct. We have to keep going over it from all different angles to really raise all the level confusion and backwards thinking up into awareness. What good does it do to say the truth is all there is if there are still aspects of level confusion that have not been exposed? What do you have then? Friend, denial, David, that is what you have. That is why it is imperative to be very thorough and to look at everything. You certainly do not have the experience that truth is all there is when there is still level confusion in the mind. If you are hanging on to aspects of personhood or obligations you still have to fulfill in this world, you are still seeing causation on the screen. That is level confusion. The mind is causative. The screen is not. There are no aspects to the screen. 
and there is no causation on the screen. Truth is true and only the truth is true is a common catchword phrase we have heard as we have traveled around. It sounds great, but then we go into discussion about what seems to be daily living and find that there are inconsistencies being taught about all kinds of things. Whether it is how often you should bathe or the foods you are to eat or not to eat to become enlightened or the amount of exercise or the positions or the times of meditation backwards, backwards, backwards. All of it is backwards. People talk about ideal community environment, energy spots, vortexes, etc. Wait a minute. Which is it? That denies that the truth is true and only the truth is true. End of section.